I gotta admit, I've been letting time get away from me. Like this is creeping up really quickly. I didn't realize that, you know, today's the November the 9th. We got about nine days until the 2020 NBA draft. Like a whole thing is just off. But it's been a couple of weeks since I've done a mock draft, been doing a lot of other videos on this channel and then the uh, wrestling channel as well. Uh, so wanted to circle back and do an NBA mock draft. I believe this is version number five. If it's number six or number four, who cares? It's the latest version, all right? It is only a one-round edition. Uh, certainly some notable changes from the last time I did one a few weeks ago. And I, I got to tell you right now, like, this is really hard time to sort through what could happen in the draft because, number one, this is where you get a ton of smoke screens. Number two, you get all types of conflicting rumors, so you don't know what the hell is going to happen. Number three... Sometimes you just flat out can't account for the different philosophies of NBA front offices, especially at the top of the draft. Uh, it's hard to know what they value, hard to know what they're looking for, which also can lead you to number four, which is some of these teams are picking at the top of the draft because they're stupid and they will make stupid decisions and they will make stupid selections. It's just that simple. So... Who knows what's going to happen? Maybe we'll get some more clarity in the next week. I'll probably be on here again, what, today's the 9th, so a week from now will be Monday the 16th. Probably be on here either next Monday or Tuesday to do a final NBA mock draft. Maybe I'll actually get to a two-round edition on that one. We'll see. Um, so like I said, let me dive a little bit into some of the picks. You can check out all 30 picks in the description box below. Uh, let me start off with this. Uh, there's a lot of swirlage and spinning right now about James Wiseman, uh, the center from Memphis, is does he even want to be in Minnesota? Apparently he doesn't want to go to Minnesota because Carl Anthony Towns is already there. He envisions himself as a franchise center type of guy. Uh, do the Golden State Warriors really value Wiseman? Do they think he's a plug-and-play guy right away that can bring them something in the front court? Or is that a smokescreen? Are the T-Wolves just talking about they're interested in taking them because they want to create the smokescreen to try and force somebody like Charlotte to potentially move up to get him? Is Charlotte really interested in somebody like James Wiseman? And you know, if I'm Minnesota, and if I'm gutless, which that organization seems to be gutless, uh, right now, like they don't want to make a call with that first overall pick and make a decision, then perhaps it is better to trade back and play pussy ball here. Um, and if you could sit there and extort a future first round pick out of the Hornets because of Michael Jordan getting obsessed on James Wiseman, then you know what? Maybe it's all the better to do it, especially if you could still end up with somebody like Anthony Edwards at pick three. Like if you could do that, then you, I guess you got to go do that. You know? It'd be really tempting not to. It'd be really hard not to, I should say. Uh, as far as the whole Wiseman thing, like, do you even know that he's going to be the best center in this draft? Or is he a Kongu kid from uh, USC? Like, I just have questions about, like, you barely saw him play at Memphis. How well does he truly project? Not to mention the fact that in today's NBA, like, this comes down to the draft of a couple years ago, and I'm sorry. And I called it out at the time. I thought it was dumb for the Suns to take DeAndre Ayton. DeAndre Ayton's a really good, he's a very good player. Going to be a borderline all-star type of center in the league for a long time. But he's not a franchise changer. Big men in the league today are not franchise changers, by and large. You have certain exceptions, yes. But even then, when you look at, like, the NBA Finals, like, Sure, you had Bam out of bio, but he was a late lottery pick. You know, and the star of that team was Jimmy Butler. And you say, well, you had LeBron and you had Anthony Davis. Well, shit, Anthony Davis is a seven-foot wing player as much as he is anything else. Like, you think Wiseman is Anthony Davis level as a prospect? Hell no. You're going to see some comparisons to Chris, Chris Bosh? I don't see that. Um, so I just, I look at... Situations where, and again, keep in mind that Anthony Davis, you know, New Orleans built themselves around Davis and eventually had to trade him, so he goes and plays with LeBron and wins a ring there. So, like, you look at the Sixers, you're going to say, well, what about Joel Embiid? Well, what the hell about him? When this team getting swept in the first round of the playoffs, I'm just saying. Like, to me, this talk about Wiseman potentially going one is just so dumb. It is so dumb. 
the overwhelming odds are he will not be the best player in this draft. I mean, that's just the reality. It doesn't mean he can't be. He certainly can be. But you don't take a five number one overall in today's NBA. You just don't. You gamble on one of these young wings, one of these playmakers, one of these ball handlers. You gamble on one of them. Those are the guys that win you titles now. James Wiseman's do not, which is exactly why it would make sense that Minnesota would want to take him at one because they're stupid. Or that Charlotte would want to trade up from three to one to take him because, again, they're really stupid. So we will see what happens there. What I've done for the purposes of this mock is I have Wiseman going number one to Minnesota and I have Anthony Edwards going three to Charlotte, but that's a trade. That's Minnesota taking Wiseman to then trade him to Charlotte, Anthony Edwards going from Charlotte uh, to Minnesota. You know, like Charlotte's going to be like, well, we need a big. Uh, no, you need a franchise player that isn't a big. So until you get that, like you're just wasting time. We suppose Golden State in kind of that spot of have they been pumping up LaMelo Ball out there? Are you hearing some different conflicting reports about LaMelo Ball? Maybe he's not interviewing that well. Maybe if he doesn't go number one to Minnesota, maybe there are some uh, people out there that think that LaMelo might drop a little bit in terms of his draft stock, and it certainly is possible. Like, again, it's really hard to navigate what's true and what's fiction right now because a lot of things can change. If I look at Golden State, though, at number two, I could certainly make the argument for them taking somebody like LaMelo or somebody like the Killian Hayes kid like getting yourself another point guard, somebody that can help you with having Steph play, Steph play off the ball a little bit, giving you some length in the backcourt. Like, I can certainly defend that, but man, Avdia makes a world of sense for them. Like, I know they're probably trying to think of packaging this pick up to get a veteran established player. And maybe they think a big, like, Wiseman or Okamu makes more sense for them. But god dang, when I think back to that lineup of depth that they Death of that they had with Iguodala and Durant and Draymond and Steph and Clay, like Avdia feels like at least he fits into that Iguodala type of role. Like I look at him and I say, man, like he's hearing some rumblings that he would prefer to go there. Like I can't blame him. Like you'll want to get taken second overall, especially to a place like Golden State where you can play with Steph and Clay and Dre. Like hell yeah, you want to get that. But I also think it's a fantastic fit for him, and he's a guy that can come in and contribute now. To a certain degree and you know take over more of the responsibilities in the future um so it's just a thought but Avdia makes a world of sense to me for them at number two which brings us to the bulls at number four like the bulls could be moving up to go get lamello they could be moving up to go get wiseman they could be doing absolutely nothing and sitting put and taking somebody like obi toppin which again you need it you need a superstar do you really need a power forward and maybe part of that is the old Jerry Krause virus of that dumbass penguin every year taking a power forward. Oh, 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 we really like Corey Blunt. Oh, we really like Dickie Simpkins. Oh, why would we take Michael Finley, the hometown kid, when we could take Jason Caffey? Oh, 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 oh. We're going to take Travis Knight and then rescind his rights. Oh, 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 oh. Or it's going to take Corey Benjamin, because I saw him one time in the lineup in Oregon State. He was 6'6", but he played the four. So I think he can do that in the NBA. <laughs> I really like Elton Brad, so we're going to take him. Power forward. <laughs> we're going to take Ron Artest, because he was a college power forward. <laughs> Michael Ruffin, Laurie Kendner. <laughs> Marcus Pfizer the next year. <laughs> and even then, before we got Jamal Crawford out of that 2000 draft, we're going to sit there and we're going to draft Chris Bim, because we really like Chris Bim. <laughs> But then, after you sit there and do all of that, you say, oh, I'm going to start all over, and then I'm going to take Tyson Chandler and Eddie Curry. Oh. And you're wondering, what in the hell just happened? That's years of pent-up Bulls frustration when it comes to that damn power forward position. That's what the hell that is. So no offense to Toppin or any other any of these other bigs. I don't want any damn damn part of them for the Bulls in this draft. It's a wing or a point guard, period. You gamble on upside. So if you think LaMelo has the biggest bust potential but the highest ceiling, then you take him. If you think Killian Hayes is the more intriguing, higher ceiling prospect, and I might be inclined to agree by comparison, then you take him. You pucker your whole ring up if you're a Bulls fan and Obvious somehow makes it to four, then you take him and you run away from it. 
One of those guys. And you got no interest in any of these big men. The Toppins of the world, the Okongus, the Williams, like all will probably be good NBA players, but not for the Bulls. No. For the Bulls, this is a you need to swing for the fences and try to find yourself a franchise player type of draft. It's not going to come from one of these damn big men. I promise you that. Um, which leaves Cleveland at five. Is it Obi Toppin? Is it the kid from USC? Who knows? Do they maybe take Killian Hayes? Is you like, well, they already got a bunch of guards, but yeah, are any of them really good? Garland, is he really that good that he's not somebody that can play in a complimentary role? No. Is Colin Sexton just a guy that puts up some numbers and an opportunity on a crappy team and not really that type of dude? Probably. Certainly replaceable. Um, so I'm curious to see what Cleveland will do there. As I look through the rest of the draft, like, you know, lots of movement I would expect to come in the next couple of weeks. You see some reports about Patrick Williams getting a promise to, to be picked seven by Detroit, which, I'm sorry, like if Killian Hayes is on the board or even Akira Lewis, uh, Halliburton, any of those kind of next tier of point guards, if you're taking Patrick Williams over him like Detroit, you deserve what you get. Like I get that Williams has a lot of athletic upside, combo 3-4 type of guy, but damn. You need a playmaker, a distributor, and then that ain't that dude. I promise you that much. Um, we will see what happens as we go through the rest of the draft. I'm curious, though, for T-Wolves fans, what do you want them to do? Do you want Wiseman? Do you want them to take him and trade him? Do you want them to not get cute and just draft somebody else? If you're a Warriors fan, like, who do you think they should take? You think they should trade down? You think they should trade up if they really have the hots for Wiseman? You think they should trade down because it's not going to matter. Try and even set themselves up stronger for the future. Like, what do, what do you want them to do? Uh, if you're a Charlotte fan, oh, God, prayers. If you're a Bulls fan, what do you want them to do? Assuming the draft plays out the way it does here, the way I've got it, and that Wiseman, Abdia, and Edwards were the first three picks. Certainly a possibility, but not the only likelihood. Um, if you want to substitute out Abdia for LaMelo Ball, like, fine. Like, who do you want the Bulls to take at number four? Who's your dude and why? I'm just curious what you guys have got to say. So that's it for this mock draft. Like I said, I'll be back next week with my last one. Thank you, guys. I'll see you later.